It's 20 past 6 at night, on the early evening, I should say, late afternoon, and the fish are starting to flash. Water temperature is 13.2 degrees, and the last two weeks I've put active larvae in, uh, because they came out of winter with one or two sores, and that seems to sorted it. But now the water's starting to warm up just a touch, it's only 13.2, and they're flashing. So why? So what I'm going to do, let's take some water parameters and let's see what's going on. Um, it could well be parasites, but they haven't flashed at all, all day, until this time. That tells me it's the water and not parasites. Let's find out. One thing I'd like to point out is that I know it's late afternoon, the sun's going down, but I've got my airstone going. So I'm reluctant to think that the oxygen levels in the pond are reducing because the algae can't produce oxygen anymore. So has uh, the pH level gone up, i.e. gone alkaline? Let's find out. The only parameters I'm going to check are pH, which is, which is the acidity, and the ammonia levels, which is what the fish pee. That's the um, top and bottom of it is. And I can't see how the other parameters can change in 24 hours. I checked the water yesterday and everything was pe uh, perfect. pH was 7.2, ammonia was zero, nitrite was zero, and nitrates were still um, basically zero. When I say a trace, you could have a touch of pink, but it's literally a touch. So what's happened over 24 hours? And it's just light and temperature. So I'm thinking water parameters and not parasites. Well, there you go pH has jumped up yesterday from, um, it says 7.5 on that little scale there, but it's around about 7.2, and it's jumped to 8.5, and that's what happens in the evening, you've got to be so careful, and I do know that yesterday my GH levels were a little bit low, they're around about 5, 6, and I need to put some stuff in, and that's calcium chloride. Now, calcium chloride will give you more GH minerals, which helps to stabilise the pH level. And that's what's happened. I've had a pH swing. And that's why the fish started to swing. And about, sorry, the fish started to flash around about 10, 15 minutes ago. So I've got to be careful what I do now. I can't just bang calcium chloride in. I'm going to put just a couple of large dessert spoonfuls in, bearing in mind what 4,000 gallon pond and gradually build it up over the next two days in order to stop this, this fluctuation that's going to start happening now in spring because at night you have low temperatures and during the day you have comparatively high temperatures and the algae in the pond will um, react differently during the day, they produce oxygen, and at night, when there's no light shining on them, um, carbon dioxide di uh, levels rise, and at that point, your alkaline levels will also rise, and that's what's happened to me. So, I'm going to put some calcium chloride in now. So there you are, calcium chloride. Um, again, it's around about 25 kilograms, can't remember. I bought that a couple of years ago. Um, I don't think it's from the company in Northern Ireland. Uh, I'm not going to advertise them, but just do your research. Now, be careful with this stuff. It will turn water incredibly acidic, but it raises your GH. It's completely opposite to calcium carbonate, which turns, attempts to turn the water alkaline. This stuff is your GH and it will absolutely attempt to stabilise those fluctuations.
but be careful how you use it. When initially you put it into water, it will bubble the water, and you will see it, and it will raise the temperature of the water. And if you're not careful, just throw it in, it will burn your fish. So, my advice is to get two gallons of pond water, put two to three dessert spoonfuls in there, put it in, let it bubble away, and when it stops bubbling, sprinkle it over the pond, and then keep checking your GH levels until it goes up to around about, I think it's 9 to 12 points, I think it is. Once you've achieved that, it will help to stabilise your pH levels. So I'm going to put some in, in um, some pond water now. Okay, just look at how this water reacts now. The water temperature is 13.1 degrees. I've allowed it to stabilise. And you watch how that temperature rises as I put three and or four, I'm going to put four dessert spoonfuls of calcium chloride into it. So when you use this stuff, wear gloves. Hope you can see. Okay. Wear gloves. Um, I've had these for quite a while. Now, as you can see, calcium chloride is actually flakes. Can you see them? And you'll start, hopefully, you'll start to see things bubble. This is the first spoonful. Let's put one in. Um, first, I'll take the thermometer out. Bear in mind, it's 13.1 degrees before. I think that focuses. One. Two. Four. Right. I'm hoping what I'll do now, get to watch a short, a, actually, effervesces. There you go. See things moving, it's actually effervescing quite a lot. Now I'm going to put the thermometer back in there and you watch out the temperature rises and this is where you've got to be so careful with the stuff. Don't put too much stuff in. So the easiest way to show this is by looking at the wall indicator. Um, that, that thermometer is Wi-Fi based. But straight away, the one minute is gone to 13.2. Uh, it normally takes five, ten minutes to, for the temperature to rise. So it often has 13.2 in about a minute. what's going on down here. Let's 
little cloudy, so let's omit it a little bit. And I bet 13.4. So just look how that temperature rises. I forget the term is it isothermic or something or exothermic and when you put this um, calcium chloride into water it will warm it up and if you're not careful you will burn your fish so be incredibly careful. Mix this into water and wait until that water temperature stabilizes and completely dissolve before you attempt to add it. It's still cloudy. I'm not going to put that in until that cloudiness has disappeared. So effervescent. There we go, look. 13.5. Right, I'm going to turn the video off now and come back and stabilise. And um, let's find out what the temperature it is. Um, it'll probably take about 5 10 minutes. And when it stabilises, I'll show you the temperature. Bear in mind now, if raised by 0.4 degrees and round about what three four minutes and it can't be three four minutes this video is now two minutes fifteen about three minutes it's raised by 0.3 degrees already okay the temperature stabilized now it hasn't altered the last two Three minutes. It's now 13.9. Um, the water in the watering can. I'll just take the torch. It's still a little bit cloudy, but it stopped effervescing. Okay, so that tells me now. Uh, the cloudiness is just the calcium in there and all the chemical reaction is pretty much stopped. So what I'm going to do now is pour that over the pond and that will raise uh, the GH level just a touch, just a touch and not enough to shock the fish. Now what I am not going to do is pour it directly into the pond what I'll probably do is pour it into the vortex and let it mix gently into the stove beds until it hits the biological filter and by that point it should be quite well diluted so when it does reach the pond it won't stop the fish and I'll do this over the next couple of days and gently raise the GH levels, not the KH. The KH simply raises the alkalinity. GH um, is still linked to the KH, but the GH uh, basically helps to stabilize the alkalinity. The top the alkalinity can be too high. The KH stops the acidity getting too Low. So it's, and what I'm trying to do now is try the balance to keep it as stable, 7.5 pH. So let's go from there. I'm going to put the, um, the container now into the vortex. So if I can do this without, I'm holding the iPad in my left hand, I've got the walking can in my right, and this is now going to go into the vortex, there you go, I'm 
and hopefully this way, when it enters the pond, it'll go through the waterfall, there you go, and it won't shock the fish too much. There you are. So there you go, the water should be coming through now. Um, the calcium chloride is at a minimal amount, amount, so it shouldn't shock the fish. But let's see what the reaction to the fish are. But look straight away, it comes the waterfall, and I think it feels better for them already. Now, previous to this, literally half an hour ago, these fish just started to jump all over the shop. And it was only the netting to stop them jumping out of the pond. Um, I didn't video it, I was more concerned about sorting out what the issue was. Definitely not parasites, water quality issue. Late afternoon, um, water temperature is rising, the algae is starting to grow and bear in mind guys that during the day the algae produce oxygen at night they consume it and it will produce carbon, di um, carbon dioxide and that will turn the water alkaline and that's what happened to my water I showed you from 7.2 straight up to about 9 in the space of a day And there you go. Uh, anyone who keeps koi ought to be um, getting a water parameter test kit. That's my advice anyway. They all seem happy now anyway. No more jumping and flashing. Every fish you can see there, well the koi anyway, Yutsuri, Certainly was jumping all over the place. Matuba is jumping. And Ashiro was certainly jumping as well. They've all calmed down. Next video, the Japanese tea house.